Hi, everyone. My name is Gary Trinder. I'm a cloud developer advocate from Microsoft. And today I'm going to introduce you to the new Teams Toolkit Learn Path. Today, we're actually just going to cover how to get started uh, building apps using uh, Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio Code. Um, but this is actually going to be a series. Um, so over the next, it says five weeks, it's going to be longer than that. We're going to have a break in between. Um, we're going to cover all the modules that are in the new learn path, uh, which is called Build and Deploy Apps for Microsoft Teams using Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio Code. Um, so the learn path is already available. Uh, if you're interested, you want to rush along and, and, and get started on that learn path, then you can use the, uh, the AKA uh, MS link. So use aka.ms slash learn slash teams toolkit that'll take you to the very first module which we're going to cover today which is getting started and then over the next few weeks um, we're going to cover building bots uh, next week uh, then we're going to build some tabs fourth week we're going to uh, look at how the team's javascript library can be used to uh, add extra functionality into your applications and on the last week, we're actually going to go through how you can uh, deploy and publish your apps using uh, Teams Toolkit uh, for Visual Studio Code. So we're going to go through, um, I'll, I'll cover a lot of um, the bases end to end, how to get started right to having your app uh, deployed, running in, in Azure and, and, and available in your organization uh, catalog. But for this week, we're just going to get started. Uh, we're just going to go through the, the initial steps of how to get ready with the toolkit start, start building your apps. So first of all, let's actually start with asking the question is, what, what is a Microsoft Teams app? Well, really, if you think of a, a Teams app as uh, more of a web-based app that just extends the Teams platform. And, and the app itself is, is not actually uh, 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 the, the web part itself really a teams app is nothing more than a than a small package that contains a what's called an app manifest and you upload this package into teams and that that manifest basically tells teams what capabilities your app has and that app can have several capabilities of which i'll go through uh, shortly but basically, these capabilities are there to be able to extend the, the native features of, of Teams and allow you to customize it to whatever your, your needs of your organization are. Or if you're building an application and you're an ISV, where you can uh, bring your uh, application to Microsoft Teams to, to where people actually, actually work as well. So I mentioned a Teams app is kind of a let's say a container of capabilities let's take a look at the capabilities that that you've actually got on on offer to be able to add into your app one of the capabilities is is a bot so a bot is it can be referred to as a chat bot or a, a conversational bot and really it's a it's it's an app where you can automate uh, simple and uh, repetitive uh, tasks but you you talk to it you instruct it through through text and it could range from being you know a, a really fancy chat gpt bot where it's it's uh, picking up on your intent and and you're having a, a a real conversation like you have with a user or it could be it could be incredibly basic where it's simply almost like a command line tool but but actually running in teams and the bot can actually return responses like, as you see on the screen, like adaptive cards with buttons and actions to actually drive processes um, as well. Uh, and a good example of using this might be in kind of like a, a, a customer service um, example, support example, where, where people just want to ask questions, get answers um, and kind of be on their way without actually having to, to, to speak to people. Um, the next capability is tabs. Um, so tabs really are Teams aware web pages that can be embedded in different locations in Teams. Uh, like what we've got on the, the screen in front of us, we've got a, a tab embedded in a, in a channel, but it could also be um, uh, delivered as a, a personal app, which you can uh, open from the left hand rail. And um, you can also um, put these tabs in chats um, as well. The 
next capability um, we're going to talk about is message extensions. And these kind of come in two flavors as well. So the first type of message extension is what we call a search-based message extension. And this uh, extension lives down in, in the compose box. So when you're typing a message uh, either into a channel or into a chat, um, you've got uh, a little app there that you can use to maybe speed up uh, accessing information. Uh, you probably already use a message extension every single day. I know I do because I use the GIF app. Uh, really nice and easy to just kind of click the button, get a search box, type in for, for your image, and then embed that straight into, uh, into your message. Well, it's the same that you could have a custom message extension to uh, potentially uh, query a line of business uh, system to access some information that you can put into a message and 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 increase the the communication um, uh, in your collaborations with with your team um, through through those conversations the second type of message extension is what we call action based so this is taking action on a um, on a on a message um, so in the example that we've got there, someone just wanting to set a, a reminder uh, against a particular um, message that they've seen in a channel. Um, I use this quite a lot. Actually, I use the create a task uh, action a lot. Uh, in fact, it's part of my, my general workflow. And, and these are things that you can add in your own actions by developing an app that, that has an action based um, uh, message extension. And finally, um, We've also got meeting extensions as well. So this is the ability to enhance your, your meetings uh, to help them run maybe more productively um, that you can actually show content within a shared uh, stage and you know, help, it, help you drive uh, your, your meetings more efficiently, ask questions, get responses and so on. Another thing with meeting extensions that's, that's quite interesting is it has different stages. So you have a pre-meeting stage, you have um, a stage where um, as the, the meet is actually uh, running uh, and a post uh, meeting stage as well. So you can access this information at, at different times and you can show different uh, information and surface uh, different data dependent on whether you know, you're before or, or, or after. So those are the, the kind of the main capabilities that, that I wanted to uh, talk about as what you could actually put into your, your Teams app. But the question is, why, why build for Teams? Why, why build these uh, extensions? So one reason could simply be to just bring in some common business processes or, or simplify some business processes using uh, the, uh, the, the Teams uh, features. I mentioned uh, with the bots, um, you know, one way is you could simplify the, the process of an employee in your organization being able to, to get help, whether that's HR, whether that's IT, and having a bot there easily accessible in Teams, uh, you know, actually could speed up that, uh, that, 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 those processes, be able to get information, um, ask questions, get answers much quicker than, than, uh, than maybe without that. Another reason might be, well, actually, you want to make Teams a bit more socially interactive, right? It's a it, it's a social platform. People are collaborating and communicating all the time. Maybe you want to add something in there that that uh, is a lot, you know, uh, helps you uh, kind of enforce your company culture, do the right things. Um, you might want to, you know, put in your own custom praise. Um, uh, application in there. However, you, you you see fit. You've got the ability to to maybe improve um, how people use uh, Teams um, in your organisation. And then finally, it might be that you've already got an existing app, but people are living in Teams, and you might want to bring that app into Teams where they're working. Um, the graphic in front there shows a, a tab, which is you know, clearly uh, kind of a, a simple way of bringing an existing app into Teams by literally just surfacing uh, the, the, the web page in there, but actually thinking about how you could use some of the other capabilities like message extensions um, to maybe access the, the, the same data that your existing app does, but present it in a different way and, and show it in a way that it could be used differently to, you know, again, improve communication, increase collaboration in, in your Teams. 
I just wanted to uh, quickly go through the, uh, a support scenario, just to kind of bring this uh, more more to life. As, as why you build in teams and use these capabilities. So I mentioned before about you know um, a customer support scenario. So here we've got a, a solution that actually has uh, a Teams tab and a couple of bots just to uh, help simplify that uh, that support process. So first off, we've got a Teams tab that uh, a you know a customer or employee could use to uh, access tickets that they've opened, maybe raise new tickets potentially as uh, as well um, through a through a web based interface. But that's again surfaced in Teams, made it easily accessible. We've then got a, a bot that a support engineer could could use maybe to get reminders of, uh, of, of, of critical incidents that have just been raised that need that need attention um, reminders for you know tickets that maybe have uh, uh, expired, gone overdue that, that, that need some attention as well. Uh, that's another use for for that that bot, um, and as well as having that Teams uh, tab um, for customers to raise tickets. Well, actually providing a bot where they can ask these frequently uh, asked questions and get answers without actually having to talk to anyone in in support. Um, again, maybe speeds up that process that helps unblock that customer that uh, that um, that employee to be able to to carry on with their work. So we've talked quite a lot about uh, bots um, and the different capabilities and the different scenarios and, and why you'd want to build um, uh, apps in Teams. Now we're going to talk about Teams Toolkit. And, and Teams Toolkit is really uh, the uh, development tooling to be able to build apps really quickly, to get up and running really quickly. Now, Teams Toolkit, um, comes in two different flavors. The first flavor that I'm going to talk about it today and in this series is going to be Visual Studio Code. Um, so Teams Toolkit is a Visual Studio Code extension. Uh, it, it's in Visual Studio Code. It supports JavaScript or TypeScript, and it can run on Windows, Mac OS, and also uh, Linux. The second flavor is it's also available in Visual Studio 2022. Um, so if you're a .NET developer, uh, you, you know, use C Sharp, um, and you're on Windows, then you can uh, you know, use Teams Toolkit features in Visual Studio to, to build your apps as well. However, today, I'm just going to concentrate on Visual Studio code, and, and this is what we're, we're going to use as we go through the, uh, the learn path. So just to kind of give you uh, a, a, an understanding of the prerequisites of, yes, you, you might want to use Teams Toolkit uh, for Visual Studio Code. We've got some prerequisites that we need to cover. So first of all, is you need a Microsoft 365 tenant. That 365 tenant needs to be enabled for, for um, uploading custom apps um, as well. Um, I'll cover that uh, shortly as we start to look at, at the tool itself. Pretty, pretty obvious, you're going to need Visual Studio Code. Uh, it is Visual Studio Code extension, so that is a given. And uh, it also, you require Node.js to uh, be installed as well. Um, so currently, uh, the version 16 is supported. Version 18 uh, is, is literally coming. Um, that will be there shortly. But if you're using version 16, you'll, you'll be fine uh, for using uh, Teams Toolkit uh, for Visual Studio Code. OK, so I'm going to jump into a demo. We're going to go through the initial install uh, and setup of your tenant. And then we're going to take a look at the sample gallery and show you how you can get a sample app up and running in your tenant really quickly and just show how Teams Toolkit can, can really help you there. So if I get to the right screen, OK, here we go. So we've got Visual Studio uh, open here. and. Um, if we want to install Teams Toolkit, we can just simply come to the uh, extensions uh, marketplace, type in Teams Toolkit, and you can see here that it's already been installed on my machine. You just click the install button. That will install the, uh, the extension. It'll be really quick. It'll only take a few seconds. When that's completed, you've got the Teams Toolkit icon on the left-hand side. So this opens up the initial pane where we've got access to documentation, how-to guides, and then a couple of buttons to either create a new app from scratch using some, some templates, 
or actually we've got a samples gallery that we can see some apps that have already been built that we can uh, basically create our own apps from um, that show some of the capabilities that I've actually talked about um, earlier. Now, we're not going to go create, uh, go through the create new app. We'll do that later in, uh, in, in future modules. But first, we're going to look at view samples. So if we open up the samples gallery, you can see in here we've got a whole number of uh, different uh, available sample apps. Um, so we've got, uh, we've got tabs. Um, we've got uh, some uh, bots as well. We've got meeting apps. So there's a whole range in, in here. So definitely go and check that check those out for today i'm just going to show you how we can create an instance of this contact explorer um, now this contact explorer it's a tab uh, but it uses it uses the uh, the microsoft graph uh, toolkit uh, to build up a ui uh, and actually talk to uh, microsoft graph in the background so if i click on this i get the option to uh, create uh, a new project based on this sample, or I can actually go and view it on GitHub as well. So these are all uh, publicly accessible. Now, I've already done that, so I'm going to switch to another window where I've just created, uh, click the Create button, and here we have it. So here is what Teams Toolkit looks like on the left-hand side when we've created a new project. We've got uh, accounts up in the top left-hand side. We've got some environments. Um, we've got some uh, development features down here, deployment, and, and then links to uh, help and feedback. We've also got README in front of us that tells us a little bit more about this actual sample, what it does, and some of the, uh, the features um, which it uses uh, as well. But to get this uh, kind of up and running, first what I need to do is to sign into my Microsoft 365 account. Uh, I'm going to sign into that prompt, which uh, should open up a new window, and it's going to be a lottery as to which screen it's going to open up on. Just going to check. Yep, a browser is opening up in the background. It's on another window. It's just running it's slightly slow at the moment, which is uh, the demo gods are uh, with us there. Okay, yep, so I'm gonna sign in using an account. So basically in the background, you can't see this, but it's just a standard Azure AD login. Uh, I'm logging into, uh, into my tenant using an admin account. And there we can see it's popped up there. It's, it's actually signed in. And we can see that this side loading um, enabled um, has been uh, has got a nice green tick against it. Now, this means that I'm able to uh, side load custom apps so that I can see them and use them. Uh, if this uh, doesn't appear and it says that it's disabled, uh, what you need to do is you need to go into the admin center and uh, look in manage apps. And if you go into org-wide app settings, there is a toggle here um, for custom apps at the tenant level. So make sure that is on as well. And another place to look is under permission policies. Um, oops, sorry, no, it's setup policies. Go into global. Uh, we have here upload custom apps as well. So just make sure that that's turned on. If you If you have to turn it on, then just be aware that it can take a little while for that setting to actually uh, become available and to, to actually persist. Uh, so just give it give it a little while and, and, and check back. But if you're using a developer tenant, then actually that should be done for you and you shouldn't actually have an, an issue. And we definitely recommend uh, using development tenant for your, uh, uh, for your team's development anyway. Now that we've signed into the Microsoft 365 uh, tenant, uh, what we can do is we can actually run this uh, app locally. Um, so we just click the little uh, little debug button there against the local environment and then choose the, uh, the, the browser that we want to use. And I'm going to use Edge for this. So this starts Teams Toolkit. And Teams Toolkit basically is doing a lot of work in the background. It's setting up a lot of things for you. It's building up that app manifest file um, that I talked about before, which describes what the features of the app has uh, when we upload that into uh, Microsoft Teams. But it's doing a whole host of other things in, in this sample. So this is a tab. So there needs to be a web server set up. Uh, it, it uses SSO. So there's an Azure AD registration being created as well and being configured and uh, making sure that that's all set up and, and ready. And this is kind of where um, 
the the, the power of Teams Toolkit really uh, really comes into its own when uh, you know, it can handle a lot of these uh, complexities. Oh, and there we go. We have an error. As I was just saying, that the demo gods have not gone have not gone well there. Uh, let me just try that again. Just check the uh, the the output. Hopefully, there's not a uh, an issue in Azure AD at this moment in time. You're just testing your resilience. Don't worry about it. It, Gary. it is. It is. It's <laughs> doing that right. I wish it tested my resilience earlier today when I went through this. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that one's that one's not happened. Okay, let's just switch back and let's just try a different one. Let's try this one. Uh, how are we uh, doing for time? So we've got a few minutes left. Yeah, eight minutes on top of the hour, but I only need maybe a minute or so for the um, wrap up. So you're good to go. Okay. So this is already installed. Teams Toolkit should already sign me in as well. So that's already signed in. So let's run this one. So this, uh, yeah, now this is running. This will take us slightly longer because it's going to do an NPM install, but I'm hoping that's not going to take too long. Um, and uh, and that's going to get up and running. I think that's because we did the shark bait ooh, uh, uh, from uh, Finding Nemo. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think at this point, when it's like, what entertaining things can we do when there's an NPM install <laughs> happening? It, uh, it, it, it needs some type of GIF animation. It definitely does, yeah. Maybe, maybe I need feedback. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe we need to provide a little video down in the bottom. Oh, yeah. whilst, you're, whilst you're installing it, all the packages. Let's. Uh, or, or if we really want to be cruel, we can run some ads. <laughs> oh well, yeah. Can you sure get like a cinematic countdown for you there, Gary? Oh, that is. Yeah. Is this twenty-four? <laughs> <laughs> so whilst that's running, um, I'll just kind of talk through actually the. What you can see here is that um, Toolkit's all, it's checked the prerequisites as well. So it, it checked that Node was installed. Uh, it checked that connected to um, the uh, my Microsoft 365 tenant. Uh, it checked as well that there's a, a development certificate for for the local host for sort of the web server that that it's set up to uh, to run the code. And it's also checking the uh, the, the parts as well, um, and then just provide this this summary just to you know make sure that that everything is correct and present. Um, so then its first step is well, it's a new project. It needs to go and and uh, run an npm install because of the the dependencies. Once it's got past that, uh, it then goes um, and sets up the the other things that the uh, that that the the project needs like. Azure AD, which uh, which I'm hoping, there we go. So ah, it went straight through there. So I'm not sure what was problem wrong with the uh, the other uh, sample. Uh, it did definitely work earlier, um, so I'm surprised that it it didn't. Um, but we've got a backup, and it's a uh, it's a great backup. Um, so quickly, I don't know if you saw it, but I actually said that it was building the app manifest file, and in the background, it's uploading that to uh, to Microsoft Teams. So when it loads into Teams, Teams is just going, oh, I need to find a, a tab. Where's it running? Oh, it's running on the local host. So it's going to go out to that local host address and then pull the uh, the, the web server content uh, into into Teams. So it's just starting up this uh, development server once it's got past that. So the debug session has happened and then a browser window will appear. So that's taken a little while to do that NPM install, but I'm uh, hoping that uh, I can get this shown. 
and then quickly hand back over to you, uh, Fabian. Just make sure there's, uh, there's, oh, there we go. There's a there's a window in the background, and just sign in. Of course, Authenticator. And I'll approve that. Okay, so that's been approved. So at this point, um, because the app has been uh, already uploaded into Teams, we've got now the, the side loading window uh, where we can add this in. And there we go, I can click add. So this adds adds it into Teams just for me. Um, doesn't add it into the organization store, so it's not available to anyone else in, in this ten. That's, that's a separate uh, feature. What we should, should be able to see here is a personal tab and click the button and we can see that it's got a host of graph um, API permissions that we uh, need to consent to. I'm going to accept that. And then we have the hub here. I can look at my files. I can create to-do tasks and calendar events. So that's that's created the app running in my tenant from the sample app. Um, some resources uh, that's available for this. I'll provide all of the links uh, after the session. We'll put them in the call notes as as well. But just a reminder that the the actual learning path is available. We just finished week one. We've got four more weeks to go. Hopefully the demos will go a little bit more smoothly than what it did today. Um, but uh, next week, we're going to talk about uh, building uh, bots using the toolkit. And just remember that the toolkit is available. So, uh, sorry, the learn path is available. Go to aka.ms slash learn slash teams toolkit to uh, take a look at today's module and future modules as well. And thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.